Hey everybody, it's Friday afternoon. Are you ready to paint? I'm ready to paint. I actually was hoping to get down to my studio a little bit earlier so that I could um, just do some painting before the class, but I just, I didn't have time. If you've been following me on Instagram, uh, I have just been driven today. I'm like, I am getting stuff done. So I've gotten like, I fixed that ottoman that I've been sharing. Um, I started upholstering the bed. I have been working on some more backdrops for um, like flat lay photography, but also just for backdrops for still life paintings. So anyway, and bonjour, living a French life. Glad that you're, well, you'll have to tell me what your name is. So I'm not calling you living a French life all your all the time, but good to see you again. Do you have your glass of wine today? Ready to paint with us? Um, I know more people are going to be joining us here. I came on again, just, uh, just a touch early. So I made sure that I had everything all set up and Hey, Judy from Memphis. Good to see you. Jean in Jacksonville. It's chilly up here in uh, Minnesota today. I know a lot of um, people, especially in the Northeast, are experiencing quite a bit of cold right now. And Holly in Georgia, Peggy in Texas. Good to see you all today. Washington. More Georgia, more Texas. Oh, Terry's in my neck of the woods, southeastern Minnesota. I'm in Rochester, Minnesota, so we're not too far away from each other. Hello from New Zealand. What time? I was going to say, what time is it there? Seven in the morning. So that's that's not too bad. Having coffee with us and painting. Amy, it's your first live class. Yay! Welcome. We have a really good time. I really do wish I could hear all of you talking to me as well, that we could, it could be a lot more of a conversation, but um, this is just how it is. So I can see your comments and getting used to that. Hi from Tulsa, Denver, the UK, Pennsylvania. So what is it? You're not painting today. It's, uh, oh, it's VE day. I didn't know that that it's ve day how cool that is definitely something we're celebrating I, I don't know why we don't make a bigger deal out of that in the in the us um i know it's i mean you're in europe so that makes a makes a lot more sense but still we had a lot of americans over there including uh well both of them, one of them grandfather was in the pacific the other one was in the pacific and in europe uh but anyway all right. Well, we are going to do a still life painting today. And the the best way to do a still life painting is to set it up to paint it. Um, that's kind of the whole purpose of the still life is um, when you're painting a, a person or a figure or an animal or even when you're out painting a landscape, things move and change pretty quickly. People and animals will only sit for you for so long. Animals, maybe not at all. Um, people, you can only have them in a session for so long. And also, uh, if you're using a model, you have to pay a model, all of that sort of thing. So uh, still life is a kind of painting that you could do where you're able to paint from life. And painting from life really is the best thing. We can paint from our imagination and what we know of the world, what we know from our own experience, but we always come to what we're painting with all of these assumptions. And you really see that when you're first, when you draw what your assumption is of something, and then when you actually look at something and draw it. And a good example is an eye. And I'm just going to kind of draw it out. When we draw an eye, we tend to draw it in an almond shape with a circle in the middle. That's how most of us would draw an eye. When you actually look at a picture of an eye and try to draw it, it's not an almond shape at all. You realize, wow, there are all of these little intricacies to the eye 
that don't fit my assumptions of what an eye is. And so it's really important as much as you can to draw from life. And that's where still life comes in because you can set up a pair, you can set up a vase, uh, whatever. You can set up anything and, and then you have time to paint it. You can control lighting situations. So you can come back to something through multiple sessions. So um, I started my painting journey doing landscapes from pictures. And then I did a hundred still life series. And those helped me so much with learning about lighting, color, looking at something and being able to interpret it onto a canvas. So what is best for you guys if you can, like after this class, is to set up a pear, an apple, a lemon, banana, whatever you have, set it up somewhere where you have some good light on it and try to paint it. So that's kind of your homework assignment. But today we're going to paint from a picture so we can all be painting the same thing. I think it's easier when we're painting the same thing as opposed to um, I'm talking about highlights and shadows that you're not seeing on your own setup. There's just too many variables. So if you would like to set up a pair and paint it, go for it. That That's fantastic. But we'll obviously we'll be doing different things. Uh, Linda, you asked about my sweatshirt. I actually used to sell these. I don't sell them anymore. Um, I think I need to do a new design one of these days and get get some more sweatshirts out there. So I'll do that again. But I have about, I don't know, probably 10 or 15 sweatshirts in different styles. And then I have t-shirts and that's like my wardrobe when I'm working. So if you're always like, it looks like she wears the same thing all the time. Uh, I actually don't. It's the same thing, but it's, they're all different. <laughs> so, okay. Um, let me see what else. I, so this is what we're painting here. I painted a little tiny version. So we're going to paint it larger. This is a, oh, I got to turn my alerts off. This is a three by four. This one, this is the size of the mini landscapes that I've been doing. So we're going to paint this. Is the class still happening? Yeah, that's what we're doing right here. We're doing the class. I know it sounds like I'm chit chatting, I guess, but yeah, we're getting started. So this is what we're going to be painting today. And the picture is on my blog. Um, it's on the post about the mini landscapes. So if you need to go, um, what I would suggest doing is better than printing up a picture because our printers can have very different coloring. Um, I would suggest pulling it up on your phone or on a tablet. And that's often what I'll do. And I'll have it sitting here next to me like this. Now, there are advantages to um, printing it up. And when we, if we get into doing any kind of portraits or animals, are you, if any of you are into that, let me know and maybe we'll tackle that. Uh, but if you're into doing portraits and animals and that sort of thing, um, I, I like printing up the picture so that I can double check my accuracy since it's really important if you're painting a person to get their facial features right. And even one small thing can make it so it doesn't look like that person. So um, when you're trying to capture likeness, especially if you're first starting and drawing is something you're still really working on, I'm still working a lot on my drawing. Um, then th there's a way to double check it. We're not gonna do that today for still life though. Um, so the colors that we're working with, um, I'm sticking to our same palette. And really with this palette, you can do anything. You can do portraits and animals and um, all of that. Okay, so, so, so a few people says portraits, yes. Cows, yeah, we can do that kind of stuff. And okay. Um, so, and cows and sheep and animals, okay. And Joan, glad to have you here. Okay, so for those who haven't done this before, these are our colors. We use ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, and burnt sienna acts as our orange and our red. So we use it to tone down, well, we use it as a red or an orange, and we also use it to tone down blues and greens. And then um, yellow ochre pale, if you just have yellow ochre, that's okay. Any kind of version of a yellow ochre. Cadmium yellow, 
and I have cadmium yellow medium, but again, you can have dark, light, lemon. It's just the point of a cadmium yellow is to give you a bright yellow, which you can't get with the um, yellow ochre pale. But some people find, like some people like painting with a more muted palette. And if you like it to be more muted, then you might not want the cadmium yellow. That's It's too bright for some people. So I don't use it a ton, but I do like it in landscapes and I do like it in still life for um, like for lemons, for um, pears, getting a bright green for the pears, and then titanium white. So those are our colors. And we are going to do a quick exercise before. So we're actually going to do two still life paintings. And um, I'm going to put this one aside for a second. So what we're going to what I'm going to do my painting on is a um, is a six by eight. Somebody Kim said that she added white to her yellow ochre to make it yellow ochre pale. So, yeah, you definitely can do that. That's why you can use kind of any variation of it and tweak it and that'll be fine. Um, I'm going to use a six by eight today. I will tone it. So I'll go through that whole process. But what I think is a great exercise for still life paintings just to get warmed up is to do a quick, I'm going to get you a little closer here, is to do a very quick initial study. And I'm doing this on a five by seven linen panel. So it's already toned. And I'm going to pull up my picture there. You guys see that okay? All right. And I am going to set, so everybody get ready. And we're gonna do a 10 minute pair. And I'm nervous about this, okay? <laughs> so if you're like, what? We're, let's, we're, I'm nervous with you, but I want to show you how valuable it is to do something quickly so that you don't overthink it. And then we're going to do one where we take a little bit more time. We're going to learn some lessons from this 10 minute one, and then we'll do one where we take a little bit more time. So I'm going to put my timer on. Now, usually what I'll do is kind of get some colors ready and then I'll do my 10 minute pair, but we're just going to we're just going to go ahead and do 10 minutes. So before I start that, um, somebody asked the colors again. So we've got ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, or I'm using yellow ochre pale, cadmium yellow medium, and titanium white. And those are all the colors that we're using. Yes, in 10 minutes, Juliet, we will do it. <laughs> and the brushes that I'm using, I've got one bushy brush and one synthetic. It's a white ivory brush flat. Um, so I have two options. This one I'll use for toning the canvas, for kind of softening things up. And this one I'll use for um, getting some straighter lines, harder edges. So I'm going to go ahead. You know what? I'll, I will use both. I'm going to start with the bushy brush, though, just to keep it really loose. And um, yes, and for those who are joining us and like, wait, I'm not ready, you can back and watch this video anytime you want to this will still be available so if you get behind or lost or whatever that's fine just paint this is all about just having fun I'm gonna put this aside I'm gonna look at my picture this is just about having fun I'm actually gonna give myself 11 minutes so I have a second to switch over and start mixing okay all right so I'm starting the timer now I'm pulling up my picture and what we're looking for here is just, we just wanna capture the feel of this pair. And actually I can't, I'm gonna have to move it over here. I know you can't see it as well, but you look at your picture and I have to see mine. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get a good pile of ultramarine blue and burnt sienna here to use for shadows and kind of my darker colors. Those of you who've painted with me before, you know I kind of start making a pile of paint and then I start mixing out beside it. And to make a green off of that, I'm going to add a little yellow ochre pale. Remember, we're going to do one where we slow down. So this is just this is just about getting paint on, on the canvas and just getting a feel for this. 
So I've got a dark green mixed up with just adding some yellow ochre, and then I'm gonna make a lighter green with the cadmium yellow. We got kind of more of a lime green. It's maybe a little bit bright. I'm gonna add a little bit more burnt sienna to it to tone it down. And then I'm gonna add in some white to get an even lighter one. And that's looking a little too green, not yellow green enough. So I'm adding some more yellow ochre pale. So I am taking a minute here to get a few colors ready. I'm gonna add a little more white. And I'm gonna add a little more yellow to this one here. And then I want a little bit of burnt sienna to the side. All right, so I've got some colors here. So now let's just get going. So I'm gonna start with the shadow of the pear. I'm gonna start with just kind of drawing the pear. And for this, like you wanna be really loose. Like I'm holding my brush way back and I'm just going to follow the lines of the pair. This does not have to be super neat. If you're working on a white canvas, that's okay. This is just about, okay. And then we've got this really fun upright stem. And then we've got these, we are not going to worry too much about the leaves because we have 10 minutes. So we're just going to, and if you don't finish it in the 10 minutes, like that's, that's okay too. Okay. And then I'm going to take a minute here and kind of in this darkest color that I mixed up, I'm going to add a little bit more white to it um, with ultramarine blue and burnt sienna together makes a gray. And I'm going to kind of get our shadows here. This is sort of the cool thing about working on a, a linen background is that um, it's okay if I don't fill in all the colors, like if I don't fill in the whole canvas, that's okay. All right. And then we've got a shadow over here. And then we've got one that's a little lighter. So I'm going to add a little more white to it, a little lighter shadow back here. Okay, and then we'll put a little bit of a darker one in there. This is just super, super quick. And this is just to learn. And then let's put the shadow of the pear in. And this just, again, it, there's a little bit of a highlight there, so we'll put that in. This just forces you to not overthink it just to do it. And, and this is the point of this too. It, this is an exercise. So when you're doing an exercise, you don't have to think about like, man, this has to be a great finished work that, you know, I'm going to frame and hang on the wall. Like it's just, this is an exercise. So the bottom of the pair here is surprisingly light. And that is because there's this reflected light that's coming up off of um, the surface that it's sitting on. And if you want your yellow a little brighter, add a little more white and cadmium yellow, which I'm doing to mine. I'm adding a little white and cadmium yellow because it's this is where light's hitting directly. It's no longer reflected light. It's direct light. So I'm making it a little bit yellower a little whiter to get this brighter color. We've got a little, I love painting pears because their shape is just so fun. Like I think they're much more fun than apples. And of course they're green. And if you follow me, you know, like greens and blues, that's just my thing. I was just thinking about that earlier that I sometimes feel like I have to like apologize for that or I have to like, try to fit other colors in so I'm not being just so predictable, but I'm like, well, that's really what I like. So we've got the shadow there from the stem. And then we've got a little tiny highlight back here. OK, 
Okay. And then on the back end of the stem, I'm going to use our dark color and mix a little bit more burnt sienna into it. Get that dark end. And then we've got, I'm going to take some burnt sienna, a little white with it because our stem is a little reddish on this side. So I'm going to get this red side in. And then it's kind of a bright green in the middle. So I'm going to get grab our brighter green. I need a little more blue in there, though. And then we'll just put a little bright green in there. And we got to get our highlights. So I'm getting some white and a little bit of cadmium yellow. And I'm feeling like I'm going to run out of time any minute. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm doing better than I think I am, but okay. And we're just going to do a little like little highlight. Maybe it's a little brighter up here. A little brighter there, a little highlight up there. I feel like along here, it's a little brighter. Okay, and we've got to take care of these leaves. So these leaves are more of a blue green. The pear is a very yellow green. So we want to mix up a bit more of a blue green. And again, I'm kind of working in these piles here. And I've got to make my blue green, I've got ultramarine blue, cadmium yellow, a little bit of burnt sienna to tone it down. Then I'm going to take care of this leaf back here a little bit more and take care of this leaf that's in shadow. And let's at that and then we've got it's a little bit brighter because it's in the sun so like along the front edge so I'm adding a little more cadmium yellow a little bit more white then this one's in in the sun so we're gonna put a little bit of that there and then let's quickly do a background so we've got white ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. So we're making kind of a blue gray that's in the background there. And, and maybe add just a little bit of a, a little bit of yellow ochre to that. Let's see what this looks like. Okay. Well, I can live with that given the time. And we're going to use this background that we put in to kind of shape the pear a little bit better. But what we also want to pay attention to is when you're looking at a pear and you really focus on it, the um, what's kind of, I guess what you focus on most is like the frontmost part of the pear. And so the edges are a little bit blurrier. And this is where like kind of your mark making comes in too, like how you want to make your strokes. I like letting just a little bit of background color blend in. I mean, sorry, a little bit of the pear color blend in with my background. I think it kind of makes it like sit in the background a little bit better. Kind of creates a bit of harmony. You know what's funny with these oftentimes is I end up liking the ones that I do. <laughs> super fast more than I like the ones that I take a ton of time on because there's just something like really um it, it's just all like in it's just more instinctive it's just less you know you're not you're not trying as hard you're just letting it do you know letting it be what it is so I'm gonna make this just a touch darker back here And then you can play with the edges a little bit. Okay, and then to do the front part, I'm gonna do a little bit of white and a little bit of yellow ochre pale. I don't want it to be yellow, but I just want it to be a nice warm white. And you know what I realized? I didn't do like the stems and stuff on the leaves, but um, we just don't have a lot of time. So if we have time, maybe I'll go in and add those in. I'm kind of adding in a little bit of this surface here. Maybe I'll go back and fix that. 
Okay. Ah, there it is. <laughs> There's the time. <laughs> I felt like that was coming. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, let me just, I'll just kind of add a little. So I cheat. I'm just cheating here. I'm adding a little bit more white and we'll just finish this here. Now, shadow lines can be very hard or they can be soft and, and it just depends. They're fairly hard in this photo, but I'm kind of softening them up a little bit for this. And I'm just going to add a little more white. Okay. And I'm going to add a little more white up here. Okay. So how'd you guys do? And then I'm going to, I'm going to add a little more of this highlight here. And there's a little highlight up there. All right. How'd you do? <laughs> oh, the light from the back window is making it hard to see the painting. Okay. Well, let's see. Hang on. Let's, I will show you up close, but let's let me try to move here. See, the problem is I've got to let you guys see the canvas, but I've also got to be able to like reach it. <laughs> so I don't know. Does that make it any better? Okay, let me show you here what this one looks like. <laughs> okay there we go so <laughs> karen you're still mixing paints okay the light is not like usual okay i'll try turning i'll turn a little bit more i think it's because um the light's changing because it's summer um so it's getting you know it's well that doesn't make sense no i don't know what's happening anyway but there you go. That's how my 10 minute pair looks. Did anybody get partway through theirs? I guess it's, well, technically it's not a 10 minute pair because I did, I did cheat. Okay. But hopefully what you guys experienced is just that that's a good exercise. Um, and it's, it's frustrating. Okay. I'm, what I'm doing is I'm turning you guys around. So hang on. Um, it's frustrating when you, you first start because the timer goes off and you're like, but I didn't get anywhere near as done as I wanted to. This is also why I have everything on wheels so I can scooch everything around. Okay. I don't know where I'm moving you guys. All right, let's try this. Let me try putting you over here. Then you're not pointing towards any windows. You get a little tour of my studio here. Okay. Let me pull my easel around. Okay, I think this is going to be better, guys. <laughs> so Joe said, your 10-minute painting is better than I can do in, two hour in 10 hours. But here, here's the deal. You don't really know that till you give it a try. Give the 10-minute painting a try. And I'll tell you, usually those quick ones just turn out so much better than you expect. Um, Okay, let me show you now that the lighting's a little bit better. Okay, so there you go. That's the 10 minute pair. Okay, so now let's do it. Let's, where did I put my palette now? Okay, <laughs> let's do this again. Now we'll take our time. And um, yeah, I think the lighting this way is a lot better. So I'll, I'll do this from now on. I'll kind of set up this direction. Okay. Hang on. Let me get my palette now. Okay. 
I think what, what the 10 minute painting also does is it forces you for a few things. It forces you to not fiddle too much. It just forces you to put your paint down and leave it there. It also forces you to be a bit more intuitive about mixing your paint. Um, you know, you just have to kind of do it. <laughs> and because you just don't have time to fiddle with it too much. And, um, and it also forces you to focus just on the largest shapes. Um, so there's a lot that I see here that I would want to kind of fix and stuff. Like there's a bit more bounced light in these shadows. Um, there's, you know, the leaves, you can tell they're leaves, but they're really, they're not connected to any stems or anything. So I would probably add some stems. And uh, so anyway, it's just a good exercise. So let's start with ours. You can work, I'd say on a, on a, uh, six by eight or five by seven, something like that. Um, Angela, you can't get the lime green color. So do you have cadmium yellow? If you just mix um, ultramarine blue with cadmium yellow um, and then add a little bit of white, that's gonna give you a lime green. Oh, that's not mine actually. Somebody's talking about this painting back here. Um, that is, I bought that at an antique store and it's a, a study of a famous painting and, uh, I got it at a really great price. It was like $20 or something. And it's, it's, I just need to find a home for it. So it's just hanging out on my drafting table. Okay. Will I do live watercolor at some point? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> watercolor is not my... I do it for sketching and stuff, but I don't know. I don't know. Watercolor is just not my thing. There's so many like great watercolor artists that you could learn from that are not me. So I would suggest there are great watercolor classes um, offered by Jean Oliver. I would suggest looking at those. I've taken some that are wonderful. So this is um, a canvas panel. I've mixed a little bit of, um, this is a little bit of Gamsol that I've just made a little puddle here, a little wet puddle. And I'm going to get some burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. And just make up kind of a nice warm, nice warm little mixture. You can make it a little bluer, a little bit more kind of orangey red. I'm gonna leave mine a little more orangey red and we're gonna tone the canvas. I'm just using my bushy brush. This is just, we've done this before with the landscape. This is just to get some color on. And I wanna make a deal with all of you. With the 10 minute, um, your 10 minute pairs, you you can't judge them. You can't say like they're good or bad or well, you can say they're good. You can't say that they're bad. It's it's not it's not about the end result. It's about the process. And if you tell yourself it's bad, then you're going to be much less likely to do it again. Because it's going to the, the results are going to feel unsatisfying to you. What you have to look at is what did you learn doing it? This is where keeping like a journal for your art is really handy that you can do a 10 minute pair and then write something about it. You know, what did you learn? What did you like? What didn't you like? So it's not about this is bad. It's about this is what I learned. It's teaching you something. Every painting that you do, even the ones you hate, teach you something. Some things teach you, some paintings teach you really good lessons. Other paintings teach you what not to do, which are also good lessons. So I'm just now pouncing this with a paper towel just to um, dry it off a little bit and also create a little bit of a texture. So this canvas now has kind of a nice, um, a nice texture to it. Um, so Susie wants to do this and yes, they're oil paints. That's not a stupid question. 
you can't tell just by looking that that we're working with oils but yes these are oils um, I actually I'm putting my gamsol away a little bit too soon let me get a teeny another teeny little pile now I'm gonna put it away without spilling it on the computer <laughs> this is the danger of having my computer here so as I always do, I'm putting my dirty paper towels in a Ziploc bag, and then I'll fill the bag with water before disposing of it. Um, just make sure you look in your area how you need to dispose of oily rags. Um, if there's a special place you take them at the recycling center, if you can just put them out with the regular trash. Okay, I'm gonna get our um, ivory brush. Um, and uh joe what was the question oh yes so i'm keeping my gamsol in a little this is a solvent container and it has a little metal basket inside that um gives you a place to like wash your brush against it also um, what happens is any oil paint that gets in here settles to the bottom and the mineral spirits that are on top are clean. So that's why I can use it to tone the canvas or something. And you don't ever have to like dump this out and dispose of the mineral spirits. You just keep using them and using them and adding more as you use them. And then if you do ever want to change it out, like the sludge on the bottom is getting pretty big, um, then you can dump the solvents into a jar, kind of scoop out the sludge at the bottom and then put clean solvents back in. I only do that maybe once or twice a year is all I'll need to do. So I have this, this little container and it does seal so you can take it with you places. It won't spill all of that. Yep. And you can get it from, um, I would, you know, usually I would say Amazon, but Amazon Prime has been like, it's like the most disappointing thing right now because it takes like two weeks for something to get here. If it gets here at all, I've ordered some things that I've had to cancel because they never shipped. And so um, I would suggest ordering from Blick Art Supplies. Um, they'll have it. You could probably find it also at like Walmart or Hobby Lobby or Michaels, any of those things. Okay. Yeah, if it's not on Amazon, I would look at look on Blick I would, or I would look on Michael's, Joanne, that sort of thing. Just look for a solvent container. Okay, so what I've done, this is, I need a little bit more Gamsol. I've mixed, um, in a little puddle of Gamsol, I've mixed some ultramarine blue and burnt sienna in kind of a nice inky mixture. And this is what we're going to draw with. See right here, it's kind of runny, just a nice little inky mixture. You can see it's very wet, very loose. Yes, April, I do buy from Jerry's Artorama. Actually, the uh, linen panels that I use are from Jerry's. Um, okay, whoops, that's the wrong picture to this one. And for the leaves that I used for this picture, I don't have a pear tree. I don't have pear leaves. I don't have access to them. So these are some leaves that came on some roses I got that kind of have a similar shape as, um, as a, a pear leaf. So I just used those. I'm going to use the ivory brush, the straight, straighter brush, synthetic brush. And Susie, also, if you go to my blog and just put in live painting class, I have a supply list. So there are links to things and pictures and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so let's start drawing. So again, just like we did with the 10 minute pair, we're going to draw this out loosely. And the wonderful thing about oils is you can draw something and then just wipe it away. So if it's not right, just, just wipe it off. That's fine. So a couple of things that we want to pay attention to when we first start drawing. We want to look at everything in relation to everything else. So we want to look at where the pear is, where the stem starts. So let's say maybe the stem starts like there, where the bottom of the pear is. Maybe we'll put it about there. 
And we want the stem maybe, let's say it's about like that. Maybe a little longer. And then we can start kind of putting the pair in. We've got, so this, we've got this kind of straight line here and then it sort of bumps out a little bit. This is where looking at things like this is such a more interesting pear shape than I would just draw from my own, my own imagination. I would draw a pear, probably something like that. That looks, <laughs> looks more like a, a light bulb. But when you actually look at a pear, there's a lot of really interesting shapes going on. Um, you've got the sides are not symmetrical usually. So this side, I want this side leaning a, just a little bit more. Let's see, I feel like my angles are maybe just a little bit off. Bring that around, up, and then this angle. So you see when I'm drawing it out, I'm, I'm using very straight lines to, to sort of find my shape here, and then we'll soften them later. The other thing I'm going to put in is where my line is for, um, like where I want to draw the line that separates the background and the foreground. And what I used was the back piece is matte board, and the front piece is just white foam core board. So the way I'm, I'm seeing it, it's going to end up being right about in the middle of my canvas. And I really don't want that. So I think I'm going to put it up a little higher. So I'm making an executive decision, artistic decision, I guess, to put it there. Okay, so I've got my line. If you want to double check it with a ruler or a T-square, you can. Um, the, okay, the other thing that we're going to check in, which mine might be, I don't know if mine is straight because I'm looking at it at an angle. Um, the other thing that we're going to do is start to, to fill in the leaves. So what I want to do is look at the leaves in relation to the pear. So we've got like one almost touches the pear, but not quite. And then we've got this kind of triangle shape like that. Then we've got a leaf that comes up like that. It helps a lot if you don't think of it as I'm drawing a leaf. You just think like I'm drawing this shape that I'm seeing. And then from here, we've got another leaf that comes down kind of this way that and then we've got and sometimes you can make you know you can definitely make decisions about what you want to paint of a still life that's kind of the nice thing about a still life is really instead of editing it um while you're painting it which in this case you would have to do because i i'm the one who took the picture but you can, um, while you're setting up the still life, you can change things. You can be like, oh, I don't like the way this hits there. I don't like the way that hits there. And actually, I don't like the way this stem hits the bottom of the pear. I think it'll be a little bit more interesting if I allow it to sort of go a little bit more like this so that we'll see the bottom of the pear through it. So you can kind of make some, now you do that with landscapes because you can't like move a bush or move a cloud. <laughs> Not without really irritating your, you know, landscaper or your husband or whoever, you know, takes care of that or yourself if you move your bushes yourself. Um, okay, then we're getting this little leaf over here. But, you know, when you're doing a landscape, you can't just move things around. So you can just you just kind of take an artistic license. So this leaf kind of runs off. We don't know really what happens to it. So we're just going to kind of do it like that. So we're just seeing the flat edge of the leaf. And then we're seeing the stem. And again, I can't see it super well. So I'm just going to kind of make it up a little bit. This is another reason why you see artists really study, um, you know, study anatomy, they study botany, all these things, 
so that they're able to paint them faithfully. Okay, so we've got our leaf shapes and we'll start to kind of add in like where are, like what's dark, what are the shadows? So we've got, this is dark back here. It's kind of all pretty dark back here. This is partly in shadow. Okay, and then we've got this is a little shadow there and we'll do a little shadow there. All right, and then let's draw the shadows. So we've got a shadow that comes back here and around. Whoops, let's see. So our leaf is a little off. Maybe we need it more like that. Okay. And then we've got this round shadow that's from the leaf. The cool thing too about still life um, and, and playing with the shadows is you really learn a lot about how the shadows, um, they inform the viewer of the painting about the shape of the items and also how far apart they are from each other. We've got kind of a soft shadow back here. You'll see what I'm talking about here, especially with this stem, which is why I picked this one. So we do need to keep enough differentiation so we can kind of see what's what back here. So that's leaf still. And then I'm just going to leave that there for right now. If you need your what you're drawing with to be your little concoction to be a little darker, just do a little more ultramarine blue like that. Then want that to be darker, that to be darker. And we want this to be a little darker. Okay. And then we'll work on this shadow over here. So we've got, it kind of comes out almost touching the other shadow. And in this shadow, we've got a cool little thing happening in that we've got the light filtering through the leaf. So it's the shadow is almost green there. You see a little green spot. So we're, we'll want to try to get capture that. And then under here is all shadow. And then I thought it was really cool how this shadow shows you that this stem is not straight. The stem is bent. And then you want to make sure that this shadow and the stem come together because um, the, sh uh, the stem is touching the surface, which actually I need to adjust mine a little bit there. Okay. You guys are quiet, so you're all painting now. Okay, and then we put a, make a little darker side to this stem. Okay, and now let's, um, I'm gonna go ahead and switch to my bushier brush and we'll start adding a little bit of shadow. We'll start adding that shadow in on the pear. So, we're going to lose that highlight that's over there a little bit, but that's okay. This is still, it's just a little, I grabbed a little bit more burnt sienna, but it's still kind of the same mixture. And then we're going to paint right over this. And the kind of the cool thing about this, you know, this underpainting here that we're doing is, um, again, if you let some show through, that's okay. It'll add a little warmth, kind of some interest to the pair. And 
and you can we could really do the whole background and everything one thing that's kind of cool to do is to do a darker color up against the highlight like this and sometimes i'll even i'll do like a whole um there's sort of sketching out your painting and then there's doing a whole value sketch for it where you do you basically work in these tonal colors and just do all lights and darks and so you don't have like lines like this you kind of fuzz out all your lines and you would come in with um a little bit of gamsol on a paper towel it's really fun to do like um, the uh, the really brown like Bosque pears to do those like this and really not even add it a whole lot of color. So this is just some Gamsol on a paper towel that I've kind of softened. So this is just an option. You don't have to do that. You can just kind of draw it all out and go from there. But this is kind of a fun, a fun thing to do, especially if you like, if you're someone who really loves just working in neutrals, you don't like a lot of color in your paintings. There's a great artist, um, his name's Charlie Hunter, and he does all landscapes just in just in tonal colors. And it's it's beautiful. My pear's looking a little fat. We'll have to fix him up a bit, I think. All right, so let's we'll get to adding some color. Oh, and if you do want to, let's say, because there's like a highlight around the stem. You could always take some um, Gamsol on your brush or even just a clean brush and kind of wipe that away and add, an, add in a little highlight on the stem. <laughs> Someone said, I, Angela, you gave up at all the leaves and shadows. If you just want to do a pear, just do a pear. Like just completely forget about the leaves and, and all the shadows. I just want to... I want to make sure I'm giving you guys something that's, um, I don't know, that you can go back to again and again and, you know, do something new. And I think leaves are hard. Like, I remember when I, I just, oh, I hated doing leaves. I thought they were so hard. All right. So now we're ready to add some color. So we're going to start with um, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna. That's what I always start with almost to do a dark. Um but we don't want to quite, I mean, it's really dark. It's very, very dark. And our pear is, is not that dark. So we, I'm going to add some yellow ochre to it. And the yellow ochre will lighten it up and it'll also make it a little bit yellower. But it's not a bright yellow. It's very, or a bright green. It's a very muted very muted green. Add a little bit more blue. Okay, and then I'm just gonna look at where the shadows are. I'm using the stiffer brush right now, but I will probably switch to the softer brush. So I'm looking at where are the darkest parts of the pear. The shadow coming off of the stem is darkest. It's dark through here. We've got a little patch of a highlight there, so I want to keep that in. Okay, so I think that's all the dark parts. Um, so now we're going to make it a little bit lighter. So I'm going to add some more yellow ochre. And I'm going to start adding a little bit of cadmium yellow to brighten that. 
green up and we'll start to go to kind of the next lightest color. Is it light enough? Did we get light enough? Maybe I'll add a little more yellow, just a touch of white to get it where I want it. So that's, I like that better. And let's just get the mid-tones here. So we've got this kind of mid-tone through here. A little bit under here. A little bit of a mid-tone here. Right now it looks very like chunky and blocky, but we'll we'll smooth that out. And then here we got a little more. This is just about laying color down. Now, what we don't want to do is it's like, well, why, while we have a mid-tone green, let's go ahead and do the leaves too. But the leaves are a very different, um, they're a very different kind of green. It's a little bit of a bluer green. So to my green, I'm going to add more cadmium yellow, more white to get this lighter color here. So I always start with mixing one color and then I kind of adjust it as I go. Okay, this is light back behind this leaf. We've got, we can go back to a little bit of our darker color for right there. And then this is lighter. So I'm going to add more cadmium yellow, more white. Get this a little brighter right there. Right there. Okay, and I'm pretty happy with this color. I'll maybe do just just a little bit more cadmium yellow and a little bit more white. I think the rest we'll just do in this color. I'll show you a close up in just a second here. We'll get this little highlight back here. There's maybe a touch of kind of this lighter right there. Okay, so let me show you this. This is just the color laid down. So it's very, very pixelated. So Karen, the artist who works in tonal values, his name is Charlie Hunter. And you can find him on Instagram. He does uh, mostly buildings and cars, architecture, that sort of thing. And his work is just so stunning. It looks like an old sepia photo. So then I'm gonna take my bushy brush and just kind of soften some of these lines a little bit. Not too much. You don't want to completely lose, you know, any definition between the colors. Okay. So I feel like mine might be looking a little bit I don't know. Again, like I like my, <laughs> I like my five minute one better. I'm going to add a little bit like a touch of blue and to kind of this mid tone and sort of lighten this up a little bit. I feel like it might be a little dark. And then one thing I do like to do is add just a little bit of 
burnt sienna in a few places. It just kind of adds a little bit of warmth. And then we'll add um, a little bit of white. So we'll do we'll do these highlights real quick. We'll grab a little bit of white, a little bit of cadmium yellow. Try to get kind of a nice clean pile when you're doing that so your highlight's not muddy. And then we'll just sort of put that in, that little highlight. And we've got some highlight here. And then we even have a little bit, it's a little more green, but we've got a little highlight down here. So we'll just kind of put that in very softly. So you just kind of keep fiddling with it until you're happy with where you are with the colors and things. So there's mine, how that's looking. Okay, let's, um, we'll get to, let's see, let's do the stem. So I'm gonna grab this lighter green that I've got going on here. And we'll put that right up the middle of the stem because we've got a light green up there. So I'm kind of putting my brush up and then I'm gonna wiggle it. And then on this side, we're going to do our darkest color. I'm going to make it even a little darker with some, because it really is the darkest thing in the, in the setup. So we're going to do some, what we do to make our darks. Everybody class, <laughs> ultramarine blue, burnt sienna. That's what we do to make our darks. And then we're going to, just sort of go up the side here. Now, generally what you see artists do is the darks are thin and as you get lighter, the colors get thicker. That's a fairly normal technique. So we're going to add in some burnt sienna here. Kind of losing our green a little bit. It's interesting how like, again, this is where looking at it really comes in because you kind of assume a stem might just be like a brown stick. And it's not it's the colors are very intricate. It's got it's got this really bright kind of orangey color red color. And then it's got this bright green in the middle. So I'm mixing up burnt sienna with some white to do this side of the stem. And then we'll do a little bit of the white with the green and make kind of a little highlight along the top here. And put a little bit of it down here. So our stem is looking a little bit fat right now, but we'll we'll thin it out when we um, when we uh, do the surrounding the background. We'll we'll shape it and thin that out a little bit. All right, let's work on the other leaves. So we can kind of work with this green pile that we have. I might kind of start one here. So I'm going to use more ultramarine blue, just kind of adding it to here. I don't want to lose these colors that I have here entirely in case I need to do a little touch up, but I, um, I'm pretty good at being able to mix the same color I already mixed. I think when I started painting, that was one thing that I had that was kind of an advantage is I've already done a lot of color mixing because I have my own paint line for those who don't know. So I already knew a lot about color theory. So we're mixing up kind of more of a blue green for the leaves. 
it's not as yellow green. I got more of a blue green going on. So it's ultramarine blue, cadmium yellow, and burnt sienna if it's looking too bright to tone the green down. So it's we're using the same mix of colors, which what that does is that brings um, some harmony to the picture, as opposed to using like 20 different tubes by using two or three tubes and mixing variations. We're just getting this color harmony with the picture, um, with the painting. Yeah, and um, la la lola, the highlights are thicker. Yeah, the the whites, as you get lighter, the paint gets thicker. That's a pretty common, pretty common thing to see. <laughs> Vanessa, and you're unpacking your new house and took a break to watch me, so welcome. Happy housewarming. Okay, so I've got this green here. I feel like it might be a little bit too, um, little too bright for this. Okay, and again, we wanna find the darkest colors. I mean, the darkest like parts of the leaves and we're gonna start darker. And one thing to, to note too is this painting is about the pear. The leaves are the supporting cast. So we don't need to be quite as detailed about these leaves. We, we want them to look nice and all of that, but I'm going to try to work through them a little bit quicker. Okay, so we've got the front half of the leaf. This, this is dark back here. We've got this leaf back here. The other thing too is we're going to make sure the leaves are soft because um, again, they're not the main focus. So Okay, and since these two are sort of blending together just a little bit, I'm gonna make this one just a little bit lighter so you can tell that it's two separate leaves. To get our lighter leaf color, I'm mixing more cadmium yellow. And this is lighter here. because it's in the sun, make that a little lighter. Then this is a little lighter. Okay, and then we've got some really bright leaves back here because we've got the sun reflecting off of them. And even, I'm going to add even a little bit more white, a little more cadmium yellow, make it just a little bit, this a little brighter. In my blog post about this, so I do a follow-up blog post for every painting class that we do. And in the follow-up blog post, I'll also share some Instagram accounts that I really like for still life paintings. There are some great ones out there. Okay, and then let's get the stem. So I'm doing even more cadmium yellow, more white to mix a much brighter green. That's right here. Yes, and Tracy, in watercolors, you paint from um, light to dark. And it's just because it's a totally different, <laughs> totally different medium. It is, I, and I've done watercolor, I like it. I just have a, I just have a hard time with it. I think I'm just not patient enough for watercolor. I'm gonna put a little bit more of a highlight here on, along this leaf, just to show that this face is in the sun. And this is in the sun. Okay. And then this is a pretty harsh um, shadow line, but I'm going to soften it up just a little bit. And I'm also going to take a little bit of this and we've got kind of a um, vein running through there. So I'm going to try to get a little bit of that. And same thing back here. We've got a little bit of a vein, a little bit, um, and it's looking a little... I'm going to take some paint off my brush because I just want this to be very subtle. I don't want it to be 
um, I don't know. I just don't want it to be like obnoxious. Cause again, it's not, this is not about the leaves, but at the same time, leaves have, you know, they have some variation. So we want to show that we want them to have some life. I'm going to add just a touch of, to this really light green, a touch of ultramarine blue to get kind of a bluer green even, and then just add white instead of the cadmium yellow. So that we can put some, a little bit of blue in here. Okay, I'm pretty happy with the leaves. I'm going to use this really dark green color that we mixed up to get this stem. The other thing too is things like, so with the shadows, we want these to be kind of thin and flat, but we want um, like the stems to have more, um, those can be thicker so that they kind of lift off the canvas. So we've got that, and then we need to get this really bright green again that we used for the other stem. Because we've got this is in the sun. And then we've got a few little burnt sienna kind of tips at the edge. So, oops, that color is too muddy. We just want to get some burnt sienna. We get a nice red color and same with this. We've got a little bit of some burnt sienna at the edge. And just a little bit of the dark green maybe running down the back of that. Too much. <laughs> Let's fix it. This is where I just love oils. Oh my gosh, it's just so forgiving. You can't do this with watercolor. <laughs> with watercolor, you put a stroke there and you can kind of blot it away sometimes, but, or you can put a little water on your brush and kind of pull it up again. But man, it's just, you. most of the time you have to start over. Okay, I'm just making that a little bit more of a highlight there. We've even got just a little bit of like a pure white on the leaf. So we'll just do that. And even over here, we've got some white. Oh, and that was too much. And that was too much. Okay. Okay, I think we're ready to start doing the shadows and the background. Okay, so for our background, we're going to do ultramarine blue, burnt sienna to mix up like a nice gray color. And when you first mix those together, it's really hard to see what the color is. But once you add white, you can start to see, oh, this is more of a blue gray. This is more of a warm purpley gray. For the shadows, we want kind of more of, I think, a warmer gray because our background is blue. Oh, I lost my, there we go. So they can still be kind of bluish. And we also need to make a decision about like how the shadows are going to be in relation to the background. So they're about the same color. I mean, about the same value as the background. I'm going to leave this a little, make it a little bit lighter. I think shadows are fun because you've got like 
all of this light bouncing around. You've got light reflecting. Like if you look down here on your picture, kind of down here, this area, you've got like light reflecting off of the pear. You've got all kinds of interesting things happening. So let's just try this. We've got kind of a mid-tone gray. I think we're going to end up needing to mix up something just a little bit darker for closer to the objects. The interesting thing about shadows too is, you know, they're darker when they're, closer to an object. They can be lighter when they have light reflecting in them. Okay, and I'm going to kind of cut around with the shadow color. Oop, we totally... Now see, I have this huge gap here, which is not in the picture. I have somehow missed a leaf or something, but we're just going to go with it. But it's always important, anything you're painting, like look at things in relation to other things. And that can tell you like, ooh, my drawing is way off, which the leafs, the leaf position for me there is way off. But the nice thing about a still life is Nobody knows that except all of you who are watching it with me. But aside from that, nobody knows. So we have a very soft shadow back here. So I'm going to kind of leave, um, like leave some room to soften that up. And we've got a little bit of shadow back there. And then... Here, let's finish this up. And I'm going to mix up a little bit of a lighter color with a little bit of uh, a little bit of um, yellow ochre pale in it just to warm it up. A little lighter, a little warmer, just for some of these bounced lights area. So we've got some bounced light in here. So we want this to be a little bit lighter through here. And through here, this is a little lighter. And then this is a little lighter back here. And then, yep, so we're just really paying attention to like the shadows of what's lighter, what's darker. And then we've even got a little bit of green in there. So I'm gonna take kind of our lighter green Put some green in there. And this is, if you read Carol Marine's book on daily painting, she does a lot of still life paintings. Um, real quick, it's a little darker back here, so I'm going to a darker color. She does a lot of still life paintings and she paints this way. Like she calls it, she paints an island and then the ocean around it. Okay, and then we've got some more shadow back here. We've got a little light triangle back in there, so we'll try to leave that in. And then this kind of comes down like that. Okay. Whoops, sorry guys. Everybody with me here? Okay, now once we start adding 
the background, that is what really brings things to life. And sometimes what people will do is they will um, put the background color next to whatever they're painting just to kind of make sure that they that all of the colors are working together the way they want them to. So I'm taking this shadow color and I'm adding just a little bit more blue to it. And I think I'm going to use my bushy brush for this. And it gets a little darker closer to the pear. So we're going to do that too, get it a little darker. And that's going to also make the lighter, um, the lighter colors pop like the highlight of the pear. We'll kind of carve out our stem. And sometimes I sort of like making these little, like just sort of swooping motions to cut around things just so it's not so precise. Um, some people like, it was funny. I had like, when I was doing my hundred oil stills, I had somebody say like, I don't like that point on one of your pears. You need to, you need to go back and fix that. And I'm like, you know, I kind of like it. Artistic decision. So I'm adding a little bit more yellow ochre and a little more white and letting this kind of get a little lighter towards the edge here. I love the texture that you get from these bushy brushes. And if a color, sometimes like if I add more white, it just feels too cool. So just add a little yellow ochre and that'll warm it up. And then I'm going to go to the darker color here. One thing you want to pay attention to is, is it looking like the pear is kind of um, sitting on top of the background or is it look, does it look like it's sort of a part of a, you know, a world if that makes sense. Like it's part of the scene and a part of like one way that you can do that is by the way you brush around the pear. And again, so much of it though is artistic style. Like you have to just, your pair might look more abstract. It might look more sketchy or painterly. It might look, some of you have sent me um, paintings that are just very, very soft, very refined. You know, that might be your style. I kind of go a, a little more impressionistic. Yours might look more real, like very, it looks very realistic. And that's okay. Just let your pair be your pair. It's about what you see. And there's a little highlight here that I'm going to add. It's about what you see and what you want to say with your painting. Um, when I went to the Louvre, we did a tour that was so good and the guide talked about how much photography changed um the work that artists did and and i had always kind of thought about that like man imagine when you couldn't take pictures 
like just how, you know, you always had to have a model in front of you or you had to see what you were painting uh, or you just had to memorize it like Michelangelo did. He just memorized the human body and would just work from his memory, which is just amazing. Um, and I think Andrew Wyeth did that too. He worked a lot from memory, um, even though they did have photos then. But what happened with um, photographs is they they freed artists to not have to interpret something literal, literally because the point bef you know the point of art before well it was to tell a story and all of that sort of thing but it was also to try to portray somebody's likeness or to portray something uh, a place that people wouldn't be able to travel to go see or a person like their king uh, that they wouldn't be able to go see personally. So, um, so that was the point of, of painting or one of the points of painting. Once photography came about, that really freed artists up. They no longer had to do uh, a true likeness of something. They could do their version of what it looked like. And that's where you saw this this advent of impressionism and abstract paintings and all of these, although some people were way ahead of their time uh, even before that, uh, but photography really changed that, kind of freed up artists. So Suzanne, you have a couple of questions. Um, do you use any painting mediums other than Gamsol? So I do have one medium that I use. Um, let me grab it. It is, um, I keep it in a little bottle with a cork on it. It is a mixture that is found in Carol Marine's daily painting book. It is, I don't remember the recipe exactly. I can share it in my blog post, but it's a mixture of stand oil, linseed oil, and Gamsol. And I only use it, I use it a lot for like um, portraits when I need to do really fine work, like around the eyes and I need a thinner paint. Uh, I'll do it sometimes in portraits when I'm doing a large background or in still life if I'm doing a larger one and I want the paint to move a little bit better, I'll add some of this in. But otherwise, I usually don't. When you buy high quality artist grade paints, usually their consistency is pretty good and you don't have to add a medium unless, unless you want to. It depends on how you like your paint to feel. So I do use that. Um, and then when you varnish the final painting, do you apply a light coat or do you push it into the painting? So I wait till the painting is dry to the touch and then I use Gamvar gloss. I keep it in a little bottle so I can easily apply it. Gamvar gloss, G-A-M-V-A-R gloss. And um, it's funny, I like my furniture matte and my paintings glossy <laughs> when I paint. Um, I think that it just suits oil to have it be glossy. You just lay it on like you would a uh, polyurethane. You just lay it on top. You don't smush it in. It's a top coat, so you just lay it on top. Um, still working on my field, and it looks like a freshly plowed field. No green, field, no green. Are you on landscape, Sally? We're working on pears today. You can paint whatever you want, though. Whatever you want to paint, go ahead and do it. There are just no rules. Okay, so for the foreground here, I'm going to mix white. I'm just kind of, this is on our little pile, our little highlight pile. I'm getting a bunch of white. I'm going to add in some of our background color to make it just kind of an off gray. And then I'm going to add some yellow ochre pale to warm it up a bit. And eh, that's too yellow, so I need some more white. I just want it to be kind of a creamy off white is what I want. Now, this could be a place where I would use some, I might use some of that medium, that oil medium, because the white can be kind of thick. So, but this is a small painting, so I don't have to like move it around a lot. Oops, okay. All right, so the foreground is the brightest. So this is where we're gonna use our brightest white. Just lay some white down. And again, we're going to use the white to kind of cut into our shadows. And again, this is where oil painting is great. You can just kind of smear it in. 
I worked with acrylics when I did murals and decorative painting and I still use acrylics like for decorative painting on furniture and stuff but oh I just love oils for painting on a canvas I would not want to use acrylics again but that's just me they're wonderful acrylic artists so that's a total preference thing and there are some people who hate the way oil is like so um i don't know it like smears into itself wet on wet there's some people just hate that so it just depends on you and what you like okay i'm kind of shaping the shadow a little bit more there and i want to put a little bit of this lighter color in here because we've got that bounce light i think a little bit here too you want to try to avoid having your shadows be too like solid you don't want them to be just like a solid blob so we're going to lighten the edge of this. This is a very soft shadow back here. We'll kind of soften that too. just sort of playing a little bit. The other thing I see is there is a little bit of green back in here too. So let's, I'm just gonna put a little green in there. And even in here, just all the green reflecting off the leaves and filtering through the leaves. We wanna try to capture that as much as we can. This is still my bushy brush, but for some of this, I'm gonna switch to my, um, my straighter synthetic brush. And I'm applying this pretty thickly because I like the texture and I'll let it get a little thinner as we get a little further away. And when I'm under something that's already textured like this stem, When I first started doing still life paintings, it was like a chore. I really didn't like doing them. I was doing them just because I kind of felt like I needed to, like it was a just a part of my art education. But I came to really enjoy them. And I what I enjoy more than just like the result of them, I really enjoy what I learn from them. What I learn about light and shadows I think doing the, the series of still life paintings that I did have taught me that taught me more than probably anything else. Just doing one after the other. I did a hundred of them. I did one almost every day, not every day. It took me a few months to get through them. Okay, and then our color gets a little darker, so I'm going to mix more of this with our background color and let this color start to get a little darker. And still not dark enough. And what you can do, my paint starts to get a little like, whoop, 
oops, a little sticky on my palette, like if it's thin. So I'm taking my background color and I'm kind of mixing it with the white with my palette knife and just making more of a pile to work with. So you can always, while I work with my brush a lot to mix colors, you can always get in there with a palette knife if you want to make a, a healthy pile of paint. Okay, so we're going to let it get just a little darker. I want it even a little warmer though, a little more yellow ochre. Okay, and I just want this line to be really soft. I don't want this to be like a really harsh line. A lot of people say it's better to paint with a brush that's one size larger than what you feel comfortable with. Reason being is it sort of forces you to not be quite as neat, uh, which can yield more interesting results. So I'm trying to do that. I'm kind of sticking with my bushy brush, even though I really want to move to the other one because I can be a bit more precise with that one. It's okay if a little color... Um, from your pear or your leaves get in. That's okay. Again, we're just trying to go softly around the pear. Just kind of cut it out a little. I'm going to make this just a little bit lighter here so that there's kind of a bit, a bit of contrast between the shadow and the background. Although this shadow is really soft back here, so it's okay if it's, uh, there's kind of a transition. And then we've got this little lighter patch back there. Okay, so my, my line back here is going downhill, so let's try to fix that. Sometimes what I like to do is even just sort of brush between the two a little bit and then just so it's super super soft we want a, a transition but i don't want like a really hard line there i just want it to be really soft and i'll even put some of this color back here i'll even do things like put that green the lightest green up in here maybe put just a little bit of dark green back here And another thing to note is to kind of pay attention to how the, how things look around the pear. Like, does it look like it's all dark around the pear or is it all light around the pear? Is the light kind of looking natural or so kind of pay attention to that and fix anything that you're seeing that like, oh, it looks looking a little unnatural. That's some stuff that you see more when you, after you kind of walk away and then come back to it again. I'll tell you what, I work more on my, my line between the <laughs> <laughs> the background and the foreground. <laughs> I work so much on that. It for some reason that's always really hard for me. I think it's because it's like kind of a straight line. Okay, I'm just softening up the the edges just a little to some of these shadows. Putting kind of more of a mid-tone color between the two. All right, let me, um, I'm switching now to my finer brush and I'm just going to kind of clean things up just a little bit. I'm gonna add some burnt sienna and white to make a nice bright kind of orangey, orangey red right here. And then I'm gonna add that right here.
Okay, and then I might add a little spot down here. We got a little kind of bruise, a little brownish color that was too light. And that is too. There we go. I'm going to soften that up a little bit. Okay. And might want to feel like I've lost a little bit of, now that we have the background in, we can kind of judge if our brights look bright enough. Uh, so I'm going to add a little bit of a brighter edge right here. Just some cadmium yellow, some white added to this. Make this a little bit brighter. And maybe a little bit brighter through there. So I want a little bit of a highlight here, not as bright as a highlight on the other side, but just a little bit lighter there. I'm just going to kind of blend it in even a little. And we want this highlight on the other side of the stem to be just a little bit. Tweak that a little bit more. And we lost our shadow here a little bit. So let me get that back in again. The angle of my shadow is not perfect, but that's okay. So this is where you just sort of fiddle. And it's like, if you're happy with your pair, then, you know, you just leave it alone. I'm just sort of, I'm going to feather these, the leaf edges a little bit. And I'm going to make this just a little bit lighter, just so it sticks out just a little bit more. So these are just little adjustments. And then I'm going to, we kind of lost this stem just a little bit. So I'm just coming back in. Just to make it a little, make it stand out a little bit more, make it a little bit brighter. Same deal up here, just adding a little bit more highlight. How are you guys doing? Yeah. <laughs> so what's my favorite thing to paint? Yeah. Blueberries. I do like blueberries. Somebody else said lots of blueberries. Um, I think I like landscapes. I don't know. I love portraits too, though. They're so hard. Portraits are hard, <laughs> but I really love them. I like painting cows. I like a little bit. If you know me from my blog and stuff, you know, like I like a lot of things. I don't like just one thing. And it's kind of that way for me with painting too. I, I like I like working on being well-rounded. So if I feel like I'm doing the same thing over and over again, then I'm like, okay, time to do a landscape. Time to do a, um, you know, time to do a, a portrait. Time to just mix it up a little bit. I I try to not be... 
just one thing. But I definitely have a favorite color palette. I love, um, I love blues and greens. And all of my paintings, if you'll notice, are very cool, which um, really from like studies show that people respond to cool paintings better than, I mean, warm paintings better than cool ones. And so I felt kind of like, oh man, I need to maybe do more warm paintings, but this is me. This is what I like. And so it's, you know, it's your interpretation of it. I think don't let anybody ever tell you you're doing something wrong in art. There's just different methods. Everybody has a different way of doing things. And you need to find your way of doing things. And I think the best thing that you can do also is to give yourself permission to be a beginner and to give yourself permission to be bad at things that you're just learning. So if this is your first pair ever, let it be your first pair ever. That's okay. It probably is, is going to be the worst pair you ever painted because it's your first one. So it's okay. Let it be that. And then your second one's going to be a little better because you're going to learn. And then your third one will be better. I'm just softening this edge a little. So this is just all the little like zhuzhing stuff just kind of softening the edges a bit i don't want to lose them in you know lose some of these lines entirely i like leaving some lines but i don't want the whole thing to look really blurred but at the same time i just want to just get it to a place where I really feel really happy with it. And I feel like I'm pretty happy with it. I might put a little bit of green back here. All right. And then a lot of you have asked me about signing. I'm sorry, dropping everything. So for a painting like this, I'm using a rubber tipped brush and I'm going to carve my signature in the paint since the paint is a little bit thicker. I can sign it in the bottom there. There we go, there's the final painting. And for those who just joined me here, I do share photos of my paintings. Um, I'll share them on my blog so you can see it, print it up. I know sometimes for me, especially as I was in the very early days of painting, it was easier for me to paint off of a painting because I could kind of see the choices that the artist made, and that helped me learn. Um, you only want to do that when you're learning, though. You need to, at some point, you know, break free from that and, you know, make your own decisions about what you're seeing. But, you know, for learning, and you have permission for me to do that with, you know, to paint off of my paintings. That's the point of a class. For those who are messy, don't feel bad. <laughs> so there we go. Here's the... Now for this one, I am going to go back and add in a couple of stems because we've got leaves just kind of hanging out there. But um, I think we got two, you know, two pretty good pairs. It's funny that I'm painting them off of the same picture and yet they do they do look kind of different. I kind of captured a bit of a different personality in each of them. So, um, so I'm not sure what we're going to do next week. I, I wonder if maybe we should do another still life. Um, 
and kind of stick with that for a little while. Maybe do, we could do blueberries or a lemon. Maybe, I don't know. We I'll, I'll think about it. I do want to, um, I am open to doing like portraits or a cow or something like that. But I think that we would have to do it in multiple parts because I don't do a portrait like all in one sitting. I usually do a portrait in about four, maybe four, three or four sittings, um, probably three. And um, oh, that's a good one. So someone was asking about water in a glass. So maybe we could even do something like that, like a mason jar with or I wouldn't do a mason jar because of the writing. So we'll do like I'll think about it. let's do a still life again though so i'll do a picture and post it maybe we'll do still life for two or three weeks and um to keep kind of working on reflective light that sort of thing and also um i can talk a little bit more too about how to set up a still life i have learned a lot about you know using different backdrops i even have some lights that aren't super expensive but um, that will help shine on the pair or whatever to create a shadow and some interesting light. So um, anyway, yeah, and someone says a cow, sometimes please, and more landscapes. So um, I'll think about what we'll do next week. Maybe we'll do another kind of landscape and then we'll come back to still life. I just want to, this isn't like a comprehensive art course. This is like, let's just come paint together and have fun. So I will, I'll look through the comments maybe and see what people are asking for. And, um, and then I'll, I'll let you know. And also I wanted to tell you guys at the very end, um, I will pick somebody to give the little mini pair away to someone from this class who has left a comment. So if you've been furiously painting and have not left a comment, then leave a quick comment, just say, hey, I'm here <laughs> or whatever. And um, if you are the winner, then I'll send this along to you. I did send um, the Seascape out to somebody last week. So here's a little, a little giveaway for you guys. Thank you for attending and joining me here. It's a lot of fun. I look forward to this each, each week. And um, so uh, Deborah asked, what time do we start? I usually start at two to central time. So we've gone a little long. Try, I try to have it be about an hour and a half. We're at almost two hours now. So you guys are first for hanging with me, but the still life, it takes a while. These are recorded. I do save them on my blog. You can go watch it. I also have materials list on my blog, um, book recommendations that I talk about, I link to on the blog. So if you, <laughs> You can go to my blog, MrMustardSeed.com, just search live painting class and you'll find all of the, the classes that we've done. You can bookmark it if you want to. And thank you, Terry. She said this is the highlight of her week and I always enjoy it too. I really look forward to it. So, all right, everybody, have a wonderful weekend. Take care, stay safe. Go on nice walks outside, do what you need to do to take care of yourself, paint, practice painting. And I'm going to go do pizza movie night with my family once I do my pears a little bit more. So, all right. And another Marion. Yeah, glad you left a comment. So she says her painting looks like a kindergartner. You know, I do want to say something real quick, Marion, because um, if you ever read the book, um, what is it, Drawing from the Left? side of the brain, right? Anyway, it's something like that. Um, somebody's going to put it in the comments, I know. Anyway, there's something really interesting about, um, actually, you know, is it that? I think it is that book. She talks about, the author talks about how um, your art skill, your level of art is going to look like it would at about the age that you stopped really painting or drawing. So for most people, that's elementary school. You stop drawing about in elementary school or painting. Some people continue to do it through high school, but for most people, the mandatory art classes end in elementary school. So if this is your first time really painting or drawing since elementary school, it is perfectly reasonable and okay for your work to look like an elementary school 
piece of art because that's the last time that you were actively practicing drawing or painting. And it will progress and get better as you practice. Art is a learned skill. It's not something you're born doing. There are people with a natural affinity towards it, definitely people with um, exceptional skill, but it's also highly technical and something that you can just learn from. You just learn through repetition, through practice, just like practicing an instrument, just like practicing handwriting, um, you get better and better. So imagine if you hadn't written your name since you were in kindergarten. If you tried to write your name now, it would look like a kindergartner wrote it. So give yourself some grace. And if it looks like a kindergartner painted it, like that's okay. That that might be about where you're, that's your level. That's where you are. That's your starting point. And it'll only get better from there. So don't, don't be discouraged. Don't judge your work harshly. Um, enjoy the process. And I guarantee you, if you enjoy the process, thank you, Amy. It's Betty Edwards drawing on the right side of the brain. It is a kind of a technical dry read, but it is very encouraging. So if you're someone who's like, I don't know, feels like I just can't draw. I won't draw. It's not ever going to happen. My work is terrible. It's a very encouraging book for that, um, for someone like that. But anyway, so just don't judge your work harshly. Um, just enjoy the process. And if you enjoy the process, put on some good music, enjoy paying, playing with your paints and find something good about every painting. Like, okay, I didn't do a good job drawing the pair, but I feel like I mixed really good colors for the highlight or I mixed really good, you know, whatever. Just, just pick out something that you like about it. Like I like this little thing right here. What happened with the brush strokes? That was a total accident. I like that. I like what happened. So pick out something that you like. And um, my mom says, you need to send pictures of your work. She likes seeing pictures of your work as much as I do. She's like, you need to email them along to me. I love seeing everybody's work. So Marion at MissMustardSeed.com. You can send me an email with what you've done. It doesn't, excuse me, it doesn't have to be for this class. It could be for other classes um, or what you've done like since the classes, that's fine. And um, you can also share on uh, at Miss Mustard Seed, tag me on Instagram and I'll share you as well. So, all right, everybody, I'm really signing off now. Take care, have a great weekend and I'll see you next Friday at two.